Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Okay, welcome to the podcast, everybody. Today we have Andy, who I've known since, what, 2015? 2015, yeah. So myself and Andy were both training at similar times, and at one point Andy did actually come on one of my flights, in which I did attempt to kill him, but it, it didn't work, so he's still here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so today the uh, the topic really is is about taking your first passengers as a pilot. But if we can rewind a little bit, Andy, to when you first became interested in aviation. Yeah, it's um, it is difficult to pinpoint it, really. My dad worked in aviation, so I kind of grew up around planes, parts of planes. Uh, he developed my knowledge of how they worked and sort of piqued that, that interest. Yeah. Um, we used to go out every other year to the Farm Air Show. There's photos of me as a young boy sat inside Harriers and oh, things wow. like that. So, <laughs> yeah, lo- loads of really cool aviation stuff growing up. And now you're just, you know, flying around in a TB10. Yeah, <laughs> now I just fly an aeroplane instead. You know, it's, it's quite boring, yeah. considering. <laughs> no, that's pretty cool. So tell us what age you, you decided you were going to get into flight training and, and how that came about. So I, um, I first became interested probably as a teenager, um, going through into my 20s. But, you know, finished university, family took over, uh, working and everything else. And the funds just weren't available. Got bills um, to pay and all that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to be a responsible adult, don't you? So, um, and then approaching my late thirties, I kind of um, got into this um, sort of mental stage where I was actually, do you know what? I can afford to do this now. Yeah, it's something I've always wanted to do. My family were quite supportive of it, and um, it just so happened that I had an Alma flying flying club. It was at the time, not flying yeah. academy. Yeah, uh, voucher given to me for Christmas, yeah. and that was my. Uh, that was my first flying lesson in November 2015. Wow. Do, yeah. do you know what I found the other day? It was really random, but I found um, my trial lesson certificate from 2005. I've got that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I've still got the voucher to go to the Oak afterwards oh, yeah. in the back of my logbook. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, what did you find most challenging about the training? I think it was the navigation. So, you know, you, you go up there and you're looking down at all these fields and everything else and when you're on a road it's dead easy because you're going to yeah. go to a road you're going to go come to a junction you go left you go right you go straight on yeah whereas you know, you're looking down you're looking at a field you're looking at a road you're looking at a railway line um you know, a wind turbine yeah and trying to pinpoint where you are on this map which you, you're, you're flying an airplane you're looking at a map you're looking down yeah. and it's just you, you just sit there initially thinking how on earth am i ever going to do this and I think that the key thing with the car as well, if you get really into trouble, you can find a lay by, pull over and try it, you know. But the aeroplane carries on moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've just got to keep on going, yeah. 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 Keep timing your legs and, yeah. Have you ever actually got lost or anything, though? Um, no, I don't think I actually have. Yeah. Um, I, I know of people who have done so, but yeah, uh, I, no, I've, I've never got lost. I've been temporarily unsure of my position, should <laughs> 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 um Okay, so... What, what did you find the easiest bit of the training, really? Um, I, I guess some of the um, the general knowledge subjects. So mm. w- with my dad doing what he he was doing, and I had a keen interest in aviation, you know, a lot of the um, sort of theoretical exams, like your aircraft general knowledge and things like that, yeah. I, I knew that stuff. Yeah. Um, I'd studied physics at A-level and went on to do an engineering degree, so a, num- a lot of that stuff sort of carried over. Yeah. So whereas people were, were struggling with it, who I was learning with, I, I find it quite easy just to pick it back up again. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. So one of your flying goals was to actually take your dad flying, and you yep. managed to achieve that recently. Yeah. yeah. So how was it? Uh, it, it was all right. He was very, very quiet, okay. um, and I wasn't sure why he was quiet. And then um, afterwards, um, he sent me an email, um, and he wasn't too sure when I was talking, whether I was talking to him or whether I was talking to the tower or anything else. Uh, so he, he just figured he'd, he'd stay quiet. So we had a nice flight. It was a little bit bumpy, but uh, he enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, yeah, he sent me a really nice email, which I shared with you the other day, uh, just highlighting some of the parts of my plane he'd actually been involved in in testing them in a lab back in whatever time it was in the the factory that he went on to run so 
yeah, it, it was good. That was a that was a big goal of mine to take it yeah, offline. That's pretty cool. So one of the things I thought we'd talk about was ten tips for anybody who hasn't yet taken a passenger who's maybe just passed. Yeah. Um, to make it easier, because I don't know whether you found this, but. I found when I first started taking passengers, it was actually quite a lot more workload than I'd anticipated. It's Massively, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's a big distraction. So I've got some tips here. Perhaps we could talk through them together. And yeah, go for it. So the first one was ask the passenger their experience because I did actually fly with somebody before who'd never been in a plane before. Yeah. And I kind of had to take that into account when I flew with them. Yeah. Do you think that's something that's worthwhile doing? Yeah, massively as well. Particularly going into a small aircraft, you know, it, it's very, very different to jumping in a 737 and going to Spain. Yeah. Uh, they handle very differently. The noises are very different. And yeah. you sat you know, right at the business end of the aircraft. You, know, yeah. you, you don't get to see that ordinarily. Um, I, think, I think that could be quite intimidating, just seeing how much stuff's in there. Yeah, yeah. And, and worrying about what to touch, what not to touch. All yeah, that and this stuff. light comes on and you know, this goes down. You know, On the, the TV10, it's got a variable pitch prop. So yeah. you know, when you're taking off, yeah, um, yeah. you've got the different engine noise and everything else as you balance everything out. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like to talk to people in quite a lot of depth around um you know different flying conditions you know in the summer it can be quite bumpy because of the thermals yeah. what they're going to experience what i'm going to do so you know i put the flaps up for instance and yeah. you know that they're, they're not panicking they're not because they know i'm going to do it i've already told them in advance before we've got in the plane you know, this is what i'm going to do this is yeah. how i'm going to do it this is what you're going to experience yeah absolutely and one of the key things i think is that um Especially if you learn on a um, two-seater aircraft, then start flying four-seater, it's quite uncommon that people have ever taken weight in the rear of the aircraft yeah. before. Key thing is go and fly with an instructor first with passengers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And just see how it affects the handling of the aircraft before you go and do it yourself. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. One thing as well is I've seen, and this, this happened to me as well, oddly enough, is when people, if the mass and balance numbers don't work, and then you've got to explain to somebody why you can't fly with them, yeah. and they will just naturally make the assumption mm. it's got four seats, why can't we fly? You yeah. know? And, and almost, if you're inexperienced, you, know, you can feel a bit stupid, like, well, no, we can't do it because this works. You've got to be confident in what you're telling them to say it's, this is why. Yeah, it, it's that whole stigma of asking someone how much they weigh before you fly with them. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's you, you just yeah. you, you don't ask people how much they weigh, but you know, you, you've got to do it to yeah, do your yeah. mass and balance and yeah. to know how much fuel you've got to put in the aeroplane and, yeah, and everything yeah, else. Yeah. And yeah, I, mean, I remember the first few times I did it, I, yeah. I was absolutely mortified when I was asking yeah. those questions. But then when you explain why, and yeah. now I do the explanation up front yeah. so that before the question actually comes, um, just so they know it's actually a safety thing, so to make sure that we're safe to fly. I um, actually had this experience with one of my friends, right? One of my friends, I hadn't seen him for a while, and he'd put on a bit of timber. Anyway, he'd got a new girlfriend as well. And uh, incidentally, she was about as heavy as he was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he says, oh, yeah, I haven't seen you in ages. It'd be great to go fly. And, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, can I bring my missus? Yeah, yeah, no problem, you know. Anyway, they turned up and I'm scratching my head. Oh, shit, how do I tell them? <laughs> 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 I have to pull him to one side and say, look, mate, you've put on a bit of timber since we last spoke. You know, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't be much more blunt than that. But um, I said, I'm going to have to fly you separately because it just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. No, I've always, um, everyone I've flown with, I've always asked the question up front. Lot, you know, nothing personal, but yeah. how much do you weigh? Absolutely. I just need to do a little bit of flight planning. Yeah. And also, the advantage <coughs> of doing that is if it's someone that you've not seen for a while and they're now 20 stone, at least yeah. you know they're going to be 20 stone before you first see them and Absolutely, give the game yeah. away. Yeah, I'm not, very, I'm not very subtle either, which is... <laughs> <laughs> so, so the next thing is um, a good briefing, which you touched on earlier. So I think really touching on what happens in an emergency, if that does happen, yeah. uh, use of seat belts and doors in case they need to operate them and you're maybe, you know, if something really bad happens yeah. and you're unconscious or something. Um, vomit bags, um, you know, how to use them and how to seal them up afterwards. Um, and also just like hand signals and things because if you need somebody to be quiet sometimes the easiest thing to do is just put your hand up and if they understand yeah. that you're not being rude and you've got to talk to somebody else on the radio it kind of helps so I think just setting some ground rules on on the ground helps in the air yeah absolutely and uh, I've had conversations with people who are a bit nervous about talking about emergency procedures for instance you know, yeah. people don't want to talk about those kinds of things but yeah. actually I've got a very different view on it um, you know, I, I do that 
Sorry, we're being interrupted by an incredibly loud helicopter. You know. Yeah, that's ridiculous, all the yeah, aircraft airport, noise around here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. that's a complaint. <laughs> I'm sorry, carry on. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I've got a very different view on it. For me, it, it demonstrates a, a level of proficiency yeah. that actually, you know, I'm aware this is a, a reality. I've planned for it. I know how yeah. to deal with it. I'm, I'm confident in dealing with it. Yeah. Um, even down to little details like you know the door in the TB10, you know, the, the door can be a little bit tricky to open and unlatch. Yeah. Um, and I'll sit on the ground and we'll go through and you know, open yeah. it. Okay, now now you close it for yourself. Okay, open it again. Show me that you can open the door. Right now you've got control of your door. Yeah, um, exactly. And it just gives people that little bit of confidence before you take off that you know, we're taking things seriously. It's funny because myself and Derek were talking about this earlier. And if you were not a pilot and let's say you went flying in a PA-28 that's got a latch at the top and the bottom, mm. if the worst happened and you, you were trying to escape, you'd be trying to open that door and not being able to figure out why yeah. it didn't open. And similarly with the TB-10, if you if you touch the front of the door, it won't come off the latch. If you touch the back of the door, right. it won't come off. If you touch it in the middle, it'll open. Yeah. And you know, if something does happen, as the, the pilot in command, I need to know that, that they're able to take themselves out of the plane. Absolutely, yeah. Um, the other thing which I kind of advise people to do is perhaps when you take your first passenger, see if you've got a pilot friend who might want to go with you because yeah. you've got that scenario of flying with somebody else that's not doing any work for you but you know that they're going to be comfortable flying because they're a pilot yeah. as well. And then if you do get into any trouble for whatever reason, you've got somebody to help you as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's exactly what I did. So, talking to your passengers, if you've got the capacity to do so, I think it's a good idea to keep updating them what's going on in the flight, so they know where you're headed, what's going on, um, if you're expecting any weather or anything like that. that yeah, kind of thing. distract them. Exactly, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, just, just keep that mind busy, and if they are at all nervous, then... Um, yeah, it's a good distraction. Yeah. And also point out things on the ground. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm always sort of like pointing out points of interest along the yeah. route. Just, uh, you know, if they are feeling a little bit nervous, they won't always speak up and say, I'm yeah. not enjoying this. I um, I took my mum flying once and she was really nervous. So I'd give her a quick briefing on the ground and I said, do you want to navigate for us to keep you, you know, <laughs> keep you interested? So anyway, I told her what to do. She goes, well, how are we going to do it? I guess I'll give you a stopwatch if it helps, you know. So anyway, she sat there. And then she's panicking then because she thinks we're getting lost and <laughs> she's not doing a proper job. So the other thing is, is if you have a passenger that's unwell, turn back straight away. Yeah, absolutely. I think not just unwell. I mean, I, I was telling you a few moments ago, I took my son and his best friend up flying and... Yeah. I very quickly realised it was the worst idea I'd ever made. <laughs> um, and, you know, we, we got about 20 minutes away and yeah. you know, I just turned around and, and, and came back. They were far too excited. Uh, nothing yeah. I could do whilst I was trying to pilot this aeroplane was going to calm them down. Yeah. So, um, you know, they got the treat that they wanted. You know, they wanted to go up in the plane and yeah. um, we, we, we brought it back down safely. That's the thing. My, my twins want to go flying, and that's all they ever don't talk about. No, exactly. Just don't do it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You've, you've met my twins. They're like, I have met your twins. They're yeah. like the, the Cray twins in the Make It, and yeah. then, um, yeah, they keep going on and on and on, and I'm like, no, when you're older. Yeah. <laughs> so, next thing is um, advising people of turbulence and things so they're not as concerned. So, you know yourself, if it's a boiling hot day, it's going to be bumpy as hell usually. Yeah. Um, so, I think making them aware that that could be a problem. Is, is better to yeah, looking at the winds aloft and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean it, it's part of my um, part of my briefing whenever I take anyone up, even if they've been up with me before. Yeah, just say them like it's going to be a bit bumpy up there. Yeah, we've 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 got some some fairly strong winds. Yeah, um, just make them aware. Um, yeah. there's nothing to worry about then. Absolutely. So next thing is, um, and this is really handy with the case of your kids, is knowing how to use your intercom. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So some people don't know that in certain aircraft you can isolate the rear passengers and things like that, so yeah. you can't hear them. That's a really handy function when you've got kids screaming in the back. Yeah, it's my favourite button. <laughs> <laughs> the mute button. <laughs> so um, last one then, so it sounds like an obvious one, but it's making sure that you've got enough equipment for the flight. So... We quite often get people who like hire here and they've got their own headset and perhaps they've got one of their missus uses or whatever, but the first time they take three people, they're like, oh yeah, I haven't got three headsets. Yeah. Can I borrow one? And it's like, yeah, of course you can. But if it was your aircraft, like you, like in your yeah. scenario, you need to have enough headsets to do it. So. I am um, on that subject, actually, I did have on the way back from Nuki uh, a few years ago, uh, I was using Sky Demon on a tablet yeah. rather than navigating off the map. 
and the power bank that I had yeah. wasn't sufficient to charge my tablet. Right. And I hadn't even thought to check it. Yeah. And um, we're, we're heading out, um, literally just on our way back from Newquay, heading up the Cornwall coast. And I look down at my tablet and it's at like 23% oh, and gosh. it's not going up. It's just at 23%. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And there's no way this thing's going to get me back to Coventry at 23%. <laughs> Fortunately, the guy who I was with also had a power bank so oh, I could wow. plug it in. And But yeah, yeah. otherwise... Yeah, I was completely unprepared. It would have been back to a map, yeah. plotting a route whilst in the air. Yeah, it, yeah. it was just a yeah a bad mistake to make. You see, I had that same sort of scenario before, and then after that, I sort of said to myself, "I'm never ever not going to draw it on the chart." Yeah, you know, so I no, do so. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you kind of look at your chart and say, "Right, I'm here." Yeah. And remember where your last position was. So if it does go off, you've, yeah. you've got a backup. And I've got Sky Demon on my phone. I've yeah, got it yeah. on my tablet, yeah. and I've run my tablet for three days with Sky Demon running. Yeah, yeah. And it it keeps it top top. So, yeah, no, yeah, that's good. So then, um, off the flying subject, then onto your next challenge, which is uh, the London Marathon. Yes. So April the twenty third, um, I'm running for the Royal Society for Blind Children. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm running in honour of a young lad I know, Teddy. He's he's only eight years old. Yeah. Um, he's losing his sight. He's also losing his hearing. Oh. He's almost permanently wheelchair bound. So, you know, through no fault of his own, he was born with a, a rare genetic condition. Yeah. Um, so the marathon was um, it, it was a, a personal target of mine this year. And when it came to looking for a charity to run for, yeah. Uh, as soon as I saw RSBC RSBC on there, then yeah. um, the the decision was made. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. Um, yeah. running again in the morning um, should be up to half marathon distance this week so how, how are your preparations then so you're gradually sort of building up the distance and yeah so um, I'd completely fallen out of love with running until yeah. uh, sort of October last year I got back into it again then I contracted Covid and, and fell off the wagon again yeah um, and you know I set myself sort of around about um, early December challenge for 2023 was I was going to do a marathon Wow. Um, so um, I started sort of researching, you know, training plans and everything else. Um, and that's when uh, the first conversation about the London Marathon first came up and sort of yeah. sowed the seed. If you're going to do a marathon, you do the London yeah, Marathon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you've that, never, never done do. anything like that before? No, wow. no, no. I've never done that kind of distance before. The, the longest distance I've ever run before that, and it was a long time ago, Yeah, um, was a half marathon. Wow. But, um, yeah, I've got a very strict morning routine. So Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and my training yeah, days. Any time I ever run, if the sandwich van's running off without me, you know. <laughs> yeah, or if it's your turn to go to the bar, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty impressive. But it, it's nice, I suppose, that you've got something that's really personal to you because it's something you know. It's a motivating factor. Yeah, yeah a- absolutely. So. And, you know, Teddy is an absolute inspiration. And, yeah. You know, I can be out in the freezing cold, in the fog, on a long run, really, yeah. really struggling. And, and actually, what I'm going through falls into kind of insignificance when you consider what he goes through every day. Yeah. So if anybody wants to support um, Teddy's cause, where can they donate? For start? Yeah, go on to Just Give In. So Just Give In slash Andy Dash Godfrey 4. Okay. Um, just Give In.com, sorry, slash Andy Dash Godfrey 4. What I'll do is I'll put that link in the show notes for everybody so they can get to it. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And so, yeah, anybody, please do donate um, and, and, you know, you're helping a really, really good cause there. And uh, we'd like to support your cause. Yeah, well, I think um, £2,000 will support another child for a year. Yeah. So, yeah, a very, very small amount of money Yeah. Um, will we'll support another child for a whole year through RSBC. So... My target's two and a half thousand. You know, if I yeah. can get to that, then effectively what, what I've done is I've supported someone else like Teddy, which would be brilliant. Yeah. And we're also doing a raffle prize for you of a 30 minute two seat trial lesson. Um, so can you tell people where they go for the raffle? Is it the same link? Is it? Yeah. So uh, there'll be a Jumble Bee auction, which um, I'll set it up this week. I'll give you the, um, the, the web address for it. Okay. So there's um, your, your kind donation. There's a number of other donations that we, we've got on there as well. Um, so... That will go live over, I um, can't remember the dates now, it's the back end of March. So it'll yeah. be Friday through to a, a Monday night. Yeah. Um, it's a silent auction. People okay. basically go on there and, um, and, and bid against stuff. There's some really exciting stuff on there and there's some stuff 
in the pipeline, which yeah. is very exciting if we can pull it off. Oh, and I'm, I'll leave it there just in case I don't. <laughs> Fair enough. No, that's brilliant. So yeah, we'll put the link in the show notes and please, please do get behind Andy and his cause to, to uh, help donate there. And uh, Andy, thank you ever so much for, for coming on the podcast. No, thank you for having uh, me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, no worries. And don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.